come to laugh at the grave tender? We all come into our case. If you're trying to ask if I tend the no Hall of the Dead alone, then the answer is yes. You think anyone around here is going to lift a shovel to help me? Guess again. Leave the dirty work to old Alessandra. Look, I didn't ask for this job. I got stuck with it thanks to my father. God's forgive me for what I have done. Me I'd like to make the journey to the Hall of the Dead in Whiterun and give my ceremonial dagger to Anders, the caretaker. I believe once it's interred with my father's remains, I'll be at peace with his memory. I hadn't asked you because I was afraid you'd say no. I appreciate your help. Here, I'm entrusting you with the dagger. Bring it to Anders and he'll take care of the rest. My father was a priest of Arche. All my life was spent around the dead, being forced to learn the proper burial rituals and prayers. I never had any friends. Who'd want to spend time with the weird little girl who hangs around dead people? So I grew up with a miserable trade. This is all I know how to do. Prepare and inter the deceased. A priest of Arche is entrusted with a ceremonial dagger once they've completed their training. It's usually given by the head priest who sanctified the ritual. In my case, the head priest happened to be my father. The thing is, I never wanted to follow in his footsteps. In some ways, I still don't. I had to, for honor's sake, but I had waited too long. My father died before he could see my training to completion. When I finally became a priest, they gave me the new High Priest's dagger, but I already owned my father's. So you see, I have to return it. It breaks tradition, and I need to tell him that I finally did what he wanted. Be cautious. Pilgrimage to the shrine is not an easy one. Lady Mara bids you welcome to her benevolence. We are devoted to the goddess Mara, who gave mortals the gift of love, that they might have a hint of eternity. Her blessings are many. To love is to know the true nature of the gods. Not all can hear the broad echoes of deepest dawn. To receive the touch of Mara, you must first act as her hands in the world. Explore the facets of the infinite jewel. Are you prepared, then, to help bring the light across this land? The dawn surely opens upon you, child. You must bear its light that all may see. Mara has reflected an image to me. At the foot of the throat and the young woman, almost a girl. Her fickle love must resolve itself. The village of Iverstead. The woman, Fastred. This is the prayer heard by the goddess and relayed to her servants. Return when she has seen her path. I will entreat Mara on your behalf. What is it you seek, my child? Mara is the handmaiden of Kine, the goddess of the storm and the mother of men. She is the bearer of love and the patron of marriage. If you wish to make a donation to her benevolence, speak to Maramal and ensure your true love will endure for all eternity. May you carry the warmth of Mara to all corners of the frozen wastes. Oh my head. Yes. What do Let you me want? give you some room. I have found peace where I live and work. Oscillating between the heavens and rifting. Where are you from? From Skyrim or from inside? Mine too. Oh, 
Though my foster parents raised me till I was south of Seoul's time, they had the urge to return to my homeland. Although I have great memories from the place, I love here. I was just a kid when it was decided I had to move out of Skyrim. My mother died early and my father was a fisherman of the way for days. He asked his friends in Ta'arith to become my foster parents. These good people couldn't get a child of their own and were pleased to raise me. After they died I heard about the civil war and I returned to Skyrim. Since then I worked in the temple of Mara in Riften, taking care of the casualties of the war. I wish I could have saved all of them, but the Oh, I heal the living and attend the dead. And when I'm sober, I pray to Adric Goddess Mara, Goddess of Martyr Understanding and Compassion. Yeah, yeah, here, your blessings for Mara. How may I help you, my daughter? Wonderful! Where to begin? Mara is the goddess of love. The temple spreads her gifts by tending to the sick, the poor, and the lost. We also perform wedding ceremonies for all the loving couples in Skyrim. <laughs> yes, if you were ready, of course. Are you familiar with how marriage works in Skyrim? Typically, love in Skyrim is as earnest as the people who live here. Life is hard and short, so there's little room for long courtship. A person who is looking for a spouse simply wears an amulet of Mara about the neck, showing they are available. When another person shows interest and the two agree to be together, one of them comes to the temple and we arrange a ceremony. Of course, I'd be more than happy to add a donation to our charity box. Right now, the best you can provide is coin. We need all the help we can get. Thank you. I can promise you that this will be put to good use. Mara's domain encompasses the emotions we strive the most to embrace. Love, compassion, and understanding. It's difficult to appreciate her gifts in these dark times. But you should consider her light a beacon in the storm. May you return to her benevolence and safety. I'm a dirty beggar. Why would you want to even speak? Greetings, traveler. My name is Jade. I offer you Mara's blessing, that her light may guide you on the... Ugh. Who am I kidding? You'll end up like all the rest. Oh, you must be new to Riften. Well, if you're looking for marital guidance, I suggest you speak to Maramal, or Dinya. I can't seem to get a single soul into Mara's embrace. I think I'm cursed. As acolytes of Mara, we're supposed to put those who've lost their way back on the path toward true love. But I can't seem to keep a single couple together. How sweet. In fact, I think you just gave me a toothache. Meaning, you're not really helping. Is it that obvious? I suppose the name's a dead giveaway, too. Well, it's not exactly a secret around here, so I might as well tell you. I used to be a member of the Thieves' Guild.
I know the difference between luck and curses. Bad luck is rain at a picnic. Ataxia on your first date. Bad luck can throw love off course, but it can't capsize a ship the way a curse can. Well, take Aaron, for instance. A dashing man saves the life of a beautiful warrior in a story fit for the tales. Not only that, but he gets her to move in with him. At this point, the wedding's just a formality. Well, the first mistake was he asked for my counsel. The second mistake was following it. Literally. When I said don't leave her side, I didn't mean her backside. A man has to lead. Somehow the poor soul managed to gain her confidence, her trust, her friendship, but not her love. Sadly, no. Aaron sleeps like a guest in his own home. He thinks letting Mjol have his room will help earn her love. Poor misguided fool. Tell that to Sodrin. He still blames me for ruining his chances with Helga, as if that weren't his own fault. Helga likes big, strong men. As for Sodrin, no. The other day, I think I hurt my shoulder just looking at him. Well, there's Sviti. She sought Mara's blessing to guide her marriage with Sibi. Even I saw that one coming. Although not the murder part. Then there's Fauna, who suffers from the same disease that Sviti did. She also wants Mara's blessing. Why can't Sibi's lovers go to Brielle for once? I know. Sodrin blames me too, for ruining his chances with Helga. Although I'm not sure his intentions are completely honorable, I don't think a person in love would keep commenting on the generousness of Mara's bosom. Although, to be frank, it is quite large. Unseemly so. Okay. I suppose anything is better than handing out Dinya's letters. Alright. I'll follow. You don't go anywhere dangerous, do you? <laughs> Can I retract my earlier statement? This robe isn't designed to ward off Dragonfire. Or anything, for that matter. <laughs> I didn't really have much use for my old name, so when I met Sapphire, I decided to change my name too. Green eyes, jade... It doesn't take a college mage to figure out that gems make pretty names for girls. That's how most people in Riften know me. Didn't you suggest that I drop the name as a symbolic gesture, but I feel like that would be running away from who I was, and what I've done. Do you want the short answer, or the long one? It all goes back to my childhood. For most people, it always does. I grew up an only child, and I don't just mean siblings. I didn't have any contact with other children. So when I joined the guild, I felt like they were the brothers, sisters, and friends I never had. When I was a child, my parents would lock me in the library and make me study. That was the extent of their parenting. But I'd always find a way out. Sometimes the books even helped. Some taught me how locks were made, and some showed me how locks are broken. Both helped me pick them. And after a while, not only could I exit the library, but enter the armory. And when I was ready, escape the city entirely. They had me pick locks. I was good at that, but bad at dealing with the consequences. 
Well, I didn't want to steal from people, but I also didn't want to betray my new friends. So at first, I'd do the job and leave the mark a bit of gold. But a lot of these items were sentimental. They meant something. I could tell just by looking at their faces the next day. That hurt more than anything. One day, Vex asked me to do a heist job at the Temple of Mara. She didn't tell me what it was I was stealing, just that it was valuable. That night, Dinya and Maramal were at the Bee and Bar, preaching to the patrons. Brielle was showing the temple to a young couple. I stole away into the back, where the living quarters are, if you could call them that. These were not people of wealth. The items Vex wanted weren't even in a strong box. They were on a dresser, right next to a bouquet of flowers. They were wedding rings. When I realized that's what Vex wanted, my heart stopped. I couldn't do it. It seemed wrong. I quit, right then and there. Threw off my hood, cursed Vex, and turned around. That's when I saw Dinya, standing in the doorway. And she did what she always does. What I always needed, but never got from my mother. She hugged me. And I knew then I'd found a home. We lived in a house as big as a palace, but it felt so empty. Every day I'd sit in my room, listening to the other children playing outside. It was like slow torture. So one day I ran down the stairs and sprinted past the gate guard, just following those peals of laughter. That was the thing. When I found them, I thought they'd let me join in. But they wanted nothing to do with me. Does it matter? All it was was another rejection. <laughs>